the end of every year at Oakland Academy, we have something called STEAM Day. But what does STEAM stand for? STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. We have different hands-on activities at different locations. One for science, one for technology, one for engineering, one for arts, one for mathematics. Beside that, we have a display of students' projects. But before we get to that, let's meet the teams participating in this event. Group number one has Christian, Ethan, Andre, Maria, and Anna. Group number two, Zunu, Lincoln, Jonathan, Carolina, and Paul. Group number three with Rosie, Yanis, Benjamin, Kian, and Katie. Group number four with Brooks, Lillian, Annalisa, Micah, and Aka. Group number five with Keisha, Savior, Susie, Olivia, and Serrano. And group number six with Sunny, Ezekiel, Oriana, Madeline, and Miguel. And without further ado, let's jump into the first activity, quite understandably named Extracting DNA. Their objective, to extract and observe DNA from a strawberry. A dish soap and salt. Water. And that breaks down the cell walls. And then uh, we filter it if it needs filtering like the strawberries do. And then we pour the isopropyl alcohol on top. What? Oh, and that separates out the, the DNA. The DNA. Mm -hmm. This is blended up strawberry. Yeah. yeah. With like stuff to seep DNA in it. Strawberries cool. produce a lot of DNA. Yeah. Uh, strawberries are octopoid. Octopoid. They have eight duplicate copies of each pro in each chromosome. Okay, so we need slides. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of DNA. Yeah, you have to have a yeah. Need more alcohol. No, I think you're good. That is strawberry so. DNA. But I have a little DNA. It'll come off my toothpick. Ta ta ta. <laughs> and what did they see? No one will ever know. The next activity the groups participated in was called launch codes. Their objective: building a catapult that could fling a ping pong ball. The furthest. So what happens when I drop the ball? It, it just it falls. falls. It falls. It falls. How does it fall? <laughs> down. Down because of gravity pulls Fast. it down. Okay, gravity pulls it down. How does gravity pull it down? If I put this in the cannon and shoot it, and at the same, and it's parallel to the earth, and I drop this one at the same exact instant, which one will hit the ground first? They both. Uh, so well, that you uh, Actually, they both. When I tell you to, we're going to do a countdown, and you're going to poke a hole in it. Aim for the goat. Now let's get a good vacuum. It's pulling, it's pulling, it's pulling, it's pulling. All right, somebody give us a countdown. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it landed where? Oh, that's where I was. Glad I got moved out of the way. What are you making here? Stuff up. Well, to, to, to blow it up into the air. <laughs> you are breaking the what, what commandment? I'll you try don't that. know what you saw. Just with the ruler. That, that's why I'm just going. But I just did that. That's, that's mine. That's true. He didn't. The third activity, hyperball, centered around the objective of optimizing two factors: the longest track and the fastest exit velocity of the ball. All constrained within the size of a cardboard box. I need this to go directly out side of the hole. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna make the stops um, to make sure you know that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It doesn't need much incline in order to go down. Like it doesn't, but it needs enough to pick up speed. Oh, I need you to make located. the track from this corner to this corner, make it as long as possible. Okay, and then it's blow it. I don't know. Here, do we have a marble? Yeah. Uh-oh, here. I need to be We're thinking <laughs> outside the box. What if we take this end and shove it in a piece of foam so this oh, that didn't work. The next event was called Sweet Stained Glass. The narrator was not provided with an objective, but it looks as if they are making cookies. Cookies with a stained glass aesthetic. Yeah, we have space. Yeah. Oh, cool. So this is where you break the candy. Yeah. 
Just have a look at those beautiful, delicious pieces of art. One student even made his cookie in the shape of Oregon, his home state. And of course, an aeroplane. The last activity was a mathematics riddle game entitled The Truth Will Set You Free. The objective? Cracking a riddle to obtain your freedom. Okay. We have had a major disaster. Mm. Right. And as a part of that disaster, all of you have become handicapped. Mm. Right. One of you is going to be blind. Who wants to be blind? One of you is going to be hand, uh, handcuffed. Okay, one of you is going to be somewhat deaf. One of you is going to be mute. Okay, and one of you has crutches. Okay, so go ahead, get them on. So now, there is a way to become unhandicapped. There are four treasure-type vesicles in this room, and you need to find the four. In them, you will find a riddle. And you will need to solve the riddle. Once you solve one riddle, then we can unhandicap one, one person. Paper. You need to boil eggs Done. for exactly nine minutes, or else the visiting dentist will complain, and you will lose your job as head chef. <laughs> but you have only two hourglasses. One measuring one measures seven minutes, the other measures four minutes. How can you correctly measure nine minutes? Ben <laughs> <laughs> uh, is going to go. Benjamin can't talk. That's great. Ben is getting the block. Okay. I can try and solve another math riddle. Yeah. Did you get that one? Well, okay, so What's you that? have... There's no patrol station in the desert, and the car has space only for enough patrol to get it halfway across the desert. There's a missing dollar. Where's the mm -hmm. missing dollar? How is there a missing dollar? Okay, so prove to me that there's not a missing dollar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, and now let's get back to that assortment of fascinating displays. Mr. Lazar, take it away. Okay, the students did different experiments this year. The main purpose of doing this experiment to see the connection between math, science, engineering, arts, and technology. A lot of times the math is ignored. The purpose of doing this experiment to see the importance of math and how to interpret the data, and uh, they performed every experiment and they displayed on a poster and also they gave a PowerPoint slides and shared that idea with the other peers and also answered their questions. My hypothesis is that this, um, I got this information online. 65% of people have loops, 30% will have whorls, and 5% will have arches. I collected data by using an inked snap pad. Of course, you've all seen this. Um, it had 60 people put their fingerprint on their right index finger on it. Then they would take their inked fingerprint and stamp it on a paper with their name on it. When I received all 60 fingerprints, they organized and categorized them on Google Sheets, then I made a pie chart of my results. You see, it's like a screw. It screws the air. The no, but he said it's on backwards. Yeah, it's on backwards because it's the wind's probably supposed to probably push from this direction. Yeah, it's supposed to. So which way do it turn? The wind is coming from the back. You put this on the treadmill, spins the wheels. This works because the air around it is stationary, whereas if the car was moving uh, with the wind blowing behind it, the wind blowing behind it, once it gets to the speed of the wind, it effectively has no wind speed. So then the propeller it can propel it faster than that because of the driving it with the wheels. See the graph here? Can you raise up a little bit? Mm -hmm. graph, graph here and graph there. What's the big difference? What's the main difference? They all like dissolving. Here they, they dissolve Alka-Sasa tablets. There she's dissolved uh, ice cube. And these two are supposed to get the same curve, right? As the temperature goes higher, it should dissolve quickly. But see the difference here, right here, at the end of the higher temperature. In they have the same pattern, same pattern. That actually the time goes higher for higher temperature. Why? It's supposed to take less time. Anyone can explain? Apparently not. And for curiosity's sake, here are pictures of all of the displays for all of the experiments so we can go back later and realize our inner dreams of being statistical analysts. Actually, 
In all honesty, these are very impressive presentations. And finally, we will announce the winners to the various competitions, starting with Group 4, winner of Launch Codes, who made the longest flinging catapult. Take a look. Iron off! Oh, I just picked it up. I forgot. Woo! Up next, Group 6, winner of Hyperball. This one was the fastest. And for the Mathematic Riddle Game, The Truth Will Set You Free, the winners are Group 5 and Group 6, both getting the top score of 64 points. Oh, and I guess there were no winners for the Best Stained Glass Cookie Award. So let us finally wrap up by witnessing one of the lowest points of Steam Day. The moment when Lincoln's amphibious aeroplane tragically lost its life. R.I.P. Aeroplane.